Okay, um, we're on to really the last section um, in this bundle of videos. Um, sad, I know. Um, so, <laughs> we've, we've got on to um, one of the tricks of the trade called locating roots. So if you're not quite sure about what a root is, a root is a mathematical term for a solution um, to an equation. So by that I mean where does a curve cross the x-axis? And wherever a curve crosses its x crosses the x-axis are its roots. Okay? So for example, you could have a curve that crosses it like this. So each time it crosses the x-axis, these are its roots. And a lot of mathematics, uh, especially at this kind of stage, is interested in determining exactly where these roots are, okay, and working out the solutions to these style of questions, style of equation. So, um, in some cases, uh, this can be done uh, algebraically. In others, we have to rely on numerical methods. And numerical methods really mean that um, algebra has broken down and we can use numerical methods to give us a good approximation of where that root actually is. We may not be able to actually find um, a nice looking answer for it, it might not be a nice little third or a fraction or whatever, but it might be something that we can get to a certain number of decimal places in accuracy, or as close in accuracy as we could possibly ever want, but maybe not the exact actual answer. Um, so, one of the ideas is that if you have your x-axis like so, and we have two points on the x-axis, A and B, okay, then if we have a curve, the, let's say the curve is given by the equation y is equal to f of x, then for A, we get on our y-axis may be the point here. So this would be uh, f of a on our y-axis. Okay, that's the point f of a. And then on the, when we substitute in b, we get a point down here, for example. So this would be f of b. And you'll notice that I've purposely made sure that the point for A is above the x-axis and the point for B is below the x-axis. So if the curve is continuous, which means it's smooth and doesn't have any breaks in it, then what's going to happen is that the curve must cross the x-axis between A and B. In order to get from this point to this point, I must cross the x-axis. I mean, it might go something like this in order to do it, okay? But it must be a continuous line, so I'm not lifting my pen from the curve at any point, okay, from the uh, board at any point. And I'm making this continuous curve that must eventually meet this other point down here. So the key idea is that it must cross the x-axis in between A and B if it is continuous. And this is the root, this point here. Okay? <coughs> so... Um, what we can say is that if uh, there is a change in sign, so between f of a 
and f of b, then there must be a root between a and b. Then y equals f of x must have a root uh, between a and b. So if the root is alpha, then we can write then that alpha is between a and b. So of course you could have that the curve, if this is the x-axis and there's a and there's b, it could be that it's starting off down here and getting up, up there. And so it might do something like that. Okay, so it goes from negative to positive, or it could be positive to negative. And the whole point is that there is a change in sign, and that identifies that it must cross the x-axis at some point between these two values. So, how does this look in practice? Well, that's a good question. So let's say, um, let's say, I've got to take an example here to make sure I've got going right. Um, let's say we've got an equation that looks like um, x cubed over 5 uh, minus x squared um plus x equals zero. Okay? And we want to show that it has a root between x equals three and x equals four. Okay? So let's make us ourselves clear here. I've made, um, we've chosen here. It's a cubic equation. I know we could potentially solve this equation algebraically, but that doesn't matter at this point for this example. We're looking at where does the cubic intersect the x-axis? Where is it zero? Where are its roots? And we want to show that it has a root between x is 3 and x is 4. So in this case, our function is this x cubed over 5 minus x squared plus x. And if I calculate f of 3, then that's 3 cubed over 5 take away 3 squared plus 3, which is... Um, Plus 3, so that's minus 0.6, okay, which you need to really identify that that is less than 0, so right less than 0. And f of 4, so substituting in 4, <coughs> four, cubed, 4 cubed over 5, take away 4 squared plus 4, okay, so that is... Um, uh, minus 8.8. .8. Oh, sorry, I must have gone wrong somewhere. 5 by 5. Four. Apologies. That's 4 fifths, so that's 0 0.8. Okay, and that's greater than 0. So in any of these types of questions, you must plug in the values, and we can see that if this is where y is equal to 0, where f is 0, the x-axis, then for our initial point for 3, we had minus 0 0.6, which is down here. And then for 4, we had 0 0.8, which is up here. So the curve must cross the x-axis between 3 and 4. So as there is a change in sign um, 
there must be a root between x equals uh, 3 and x equals 4. Okay, so here is an example of the question in action. The key elements are making sure you substitute in and identify that one is less than zero, one is greater than zero, one is negative and one is positive, and then make sure that you have a concluding statement to make sure you un you're telling the examiner you understand what that is showing you. Okay? So the next video we're going to look at another example of this and where we're looking at the intersection of curves and how we can use that to find the solutions, okay, or home in on the solutions of the intersections.